Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of my bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoy this one. The Poe Shadow by Matthew Pearl. This is a historical fiction, and it's about this guy who I think he discovers some murders or being committed in the style of murders in Edgar Allan Poe's books. The Lost Angel by Javier Sierra. This is a mystery thriller book about these people who, if I'm not mistaken, are on the hunt for Noah's Ark. The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. This is a book that takes place in both uh, modern, modern time and uh, it's also historical fiction. It's about this woman who gets hired to write this woman's autobiography and the woman's history is very interesting and has lots of twists and turns to it and I believe this is getting turned into a film also and I'm pretty excited about that because I think this type of book would be really good as an adaptation. The Family by Mario Puzo. This is a historical fiction book about the Borgia family and apparently the Borgias were the inspiration behind uh, Puzo's uh, The Godfather book. If you really love the Borgias and that history and uh, Renaissance Italy, then you'll really like this book. And also, um, if you like the TV show, The Borgias, uh, this actually follows pretty closely. The show is not based off this book, but just a lot of stuff is very, very similar and happens kind of identically. The Omen Machine, a Richard and Kaylin novel by Terry Goodkind. This is like book 11 or 12, something like that. It's, it's a pretty high number in the Wizard's First Rules series. It's not technically part of the Wizard's First Rules series, but I still kind of count it as such. It's still starting a whole different type of story though, but still within that same world. The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. This is a story that takes place kind of the present time and then also historical fiction. It's basically a, a Dracula type type of book, um, kind of discovering the origins of Dracula, and it it's kind of a mystery thriller and kind of has a bit of action in it. If you like vampires and Dracula, you'll probably really like this. Even though Dracula doesn't really appear in this book that much, he kind of, honestly, this might be a spoiler, but he don't really appear until kind of the end. Revelation by C.J. Sampson. This is, I believe, book four in the Matthew Shardlake series. It's historical fiction that takes place during Henry VIII's reign. And I really love this. It's it's like a mystery thriller for the Tudor times. The Lady in the Tower by Alison Weir. This is a non-fiction book about Anne Boleyn. I found this really fascinating and informative. It, it's basically just an overview and look at and discussion of uh, just the rise and fall of Anne Boleyn and offering a very sympathetic portrayal of Anne Boleyn. Juliet by Anne Fortier. This is a book that takes place in both the modern time or present time and it's also historical fiction. It's about this girl who is some sort of descendant, I guess, of Romeo and Juliet. And um, that's part of the, the modern time plot. And the historical part of the plot involves, I guess, just a, a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. Captive Queen by Alison Weir. This is a historical fiction book about Queen Eleanor of Aquitaine. I really, really liked this. I've not read too many books about Eleanor of Aquitaine, so this is really good. The Stieg Larsson books, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, The Girl Who Played with Fire, and The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest. And these are the three books in the Millennium Trilogy. In particular, I liked The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo the most. I was highly disappointed with books two and three. In some ways, I wish I never read books two and three because, I don't know, I feel like they just ruined the whole series for me. Just the way book one was, I was expecting something different for books two and three. If you don't know if you want to read this series, at least read The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and then it's okay if you skip the other two, in my opinion. Dracula by Bram Stoker. My edition is actually, I think, an abridged edition, which I didn't realize it was an abridged edition until I was looking through some Barnes and Noble's copies and I realized mine is heavily condensed. So I'm kind of upset about that. But Dracula is seriously one of my favorite classics, probably easily within my top five to 10. Interred with Their Bones and Haunt Me Still by Jennifer Lee Carroll. These are books uh, that are very Shakespeare oriented. 
the murders in both books are heavily drawn from murders that happen in Shakespeare's works. If you like Shakespeare, uh, you'd probably kind of like these books. I, I wasn't too impressed with them. I thought they were kind of slow in parts. Labyrinth by Kate Moss. And this is a book that takes place uh, present times but also is historical fiction and it's this big epic quest to discover the Holy Grail. Helen of Troy by Margaret George and this is a historical fiction book that is a sort of retelling of the fall of Troy and the Trojan War and heavily focused on Helen of Troy and her romance with Paris. The Book of Lost Fragrances by M.J. Rose. This is about a perfume that somehow like induces these states in your head where you can I guess time travel sort of I'm not really quite sure how to explain the whole book is really this big thing about reincarnation and finding your your true love the Sherlockian by Graham Moore this is a book that takes place in the present time but also a historical fiction in the present time it's about this guy who's part of like the Baker Street Irregulars Society and he's obsessed with Sherlock Holmes and he becomes involved in this murder so he takes the opportunity to be like hey I love Sherlock Holmes I'm going to imitate him and then the historical fiction part is about Arthur Conan Doyle and Bram Stoker and they're on their own quest to discover this murderer there and Back Again, An Actor's Tale by Sean Astin. This is an autobiography written by Sean Astin and Joe Layden. And it's just basically a book about Sean Astin's experiences filming the Lord of the Rings trilogy. But it's not just that, it's also just uh, his life before the movies and then I think it's even life after the movies. And I was really excited to read this book, but I was actually kind of disappointed with it because, I don't know, I felt like all of a sudden I didn't like Sean Astin anymore as an actor. I really found him egotistical and annoying. And last for this bookshelf tour is The Host by Stephanie Meyer. And it's about um, these aliens who come down and they inhabit host bodies. And I really enjoyed this so much more than the Twilight Saga. So that's it for this bookshelf tour. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!